Hello, thank you for joining us today to worship and to pray together. I'm the Reverend Susie Collingridge and I'm the Associate Vicar in the parishes of Steep and Froxfield with Privet in Hampshire. And I'm joined today on Bible Sunday by uh, Sue Jones, who's training at the moment to be a reader, a licensed lay minister in the church. Today we draw on the ancient tradition of night prayer, or Compline, and our focus is on the gift of the Bible to help us know Jesus and to follow him. So we pray. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We come to God simply as we are, in need of a deeper knowledge of God's love and forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins. Heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. 
O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 11. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. We live in a world where messages come at us thick and fast. The internet has caused that to explode beyond our wildest imagination. But even without it, we're bombarded every day with headlines, information, images, data and opinions. Among other things, if we're searching for God, that can leave us very confused. The Bible is an amazing gift for us as Christians, yet it can be easily misused. We can take snippets out of context as proof texts and even use parts of it like a weapon with which to attack others with whom we disagree. We can also interpret the Bible as if we're always like the goodies in a situation, never the baddies. And that keeps us from being challenged. Maybe we don't want to think too much about the negative effects of how we live. Is that what God has in mind for us using the Bible? Isaiah the prophet sees God's word like a good seed that God plants with the hope of fruit, a harvest in the world and in our lives, a harvest of loving lives dedicated to God, a harvest of justice and goodness on the earth. Christian poet Malcolm Gite reminds us of John Donne's sermon on the use and abuse of scripture. He says that we must turn each page of the Bible as though we're turning back the cloth that wraps our saviour, Jesus. Our sole purpose is to reveal the radiance of the living Christ. If we use the words of scripture for any purpose other than to show Christ and his love, they no longer have authority or contain treasure, just rags. So in the end, God's word is not so much just a remarkable book of wise words, but a person, Jesus himself, God's son, God incarnate. What we have in the Bible is a powerful tool for us to know Jesus. We don't worship the Bible, but through it, we hear Jesus's powerful teaching. We read of his amazing actions and we become familiar with his world changing life, death and resurrection. We imagine ourselves face to face with God's Son himself.
we start to grasp what he did and how he changes lives today. Through the Bible, we can begin to understand who Jesus is and through him, who God is. We sense God's commitment to the creation and to every person. We glimpse God's love for us all. Then as Isaiah sings, God's word doesn't return empty, but will accomplish God's purpose. May our hearts and our minds be open to God's word, Jesus, through the words we hear and we read in the Bible. And may we come to know him for ourselves, walking with us every day. Prayer attributed to St Augustine. Watch, O Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, O Lord Christ. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying ones. Soothe your suffering ones. Pity your afflicted ones. Shield your joyous ones and all for your love's sake. Amen. The Collect for Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, who caused all scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy words, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life which you have given in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. From St Teresa of Avila. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. 
Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you'll join us again, either here, online, or in person at one of our churches. After the prayer of blessing, we leave you with some music for reflection, the prayer of St. Richard. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Goodbye and God bless you.